Main first alternate. Lane from five. Got away from one tackle and is taken down at about the 15-yard line. Mike Goolsby makes the tackle on special teams after a return of 11. Now, courtesy of Adidas, let's take a look at our starting lineups. Here's the Navy offensive line. Walsh, Moody, Schultz, Nye, and Jeffrey. Brian Madden is the quarterback. Two slot backs in this flex bone offense, Lane and Fricks, Terrell, Bailey, and Gaddy. And then often they'll go to a spread formation with four wide receivers, Bailey, Mentor, Gaddy, and Sims. It's really two offenses in one. They'll throw the ball out of the spread, try to run it out of their flex bone. Here's the option play. Madden keeps nowhere to go. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Shane Walton, who played the option well from his quarterback spot. Notre Dame's defense lines up this way to begin the game. Weaver, Campbell, and Hilliard, two seniors up front. Or, excuse me, Weaver and Irons, and White are the seniors. Boyman, Harrison, Walton, and Israel, seniors, starting amongst the linebackers and the secondary players. And there is a look at Anthony Weaver, the senior from Saratoga Springs, New York. Second down and ten. Give it to the fullback. And Anthony Weaver stops Terrell after, or Terrell it is, after a short gain. And it'll be third down and long coming up for Navy. Yeah, and third and long is not really their kind of down, Tom, as you well know. And I think one of the keys to this game for Navy is that they've lost 37 straight to Notre Dame. Is they can't have many three and outs. They need to possess the ball because their defense has struggled all year long. Third down and eight. And now Navy is forced to take a timeout. The play clock uh, was not a factor. It was at six, so it must have been a formation problem. And uh, Rick Lance pacing the sidelines. This has been a, uh, a season-long problem for the midshipmen, falling behind early. Yeah, they have gotten really blown out really in the first half of games, 174 to 59. So getting off to that good start is, is critical for them. And I said, really, the no three and outs. And... They need to win that turnover turnover category. They, they played Notre Dame, as you know, pretty tough over the years. A couple of years ago, it was a very close ball game. But uh, it can't. First half difficult. So third down and eight from their own 17-yard line. This guy needs to have a big, this is Jerome Sapp down here. He's the strong safety today for Notre Dame. He's going to have to have a big game stopping Brian Madden. Madden retreats to the shotgun formation. Gaddy in motion. Madden rolls, looking to pass, and sends it downfield incomplete. Intended for Bailey, Vontez Duff defending for Notre Dame. So Madden and the midshipmen go three and out on their first possession and now must punt from deep in their own territory. John Skaggs, the putter for Navy. Nice year. And number two in the country, averaging 45.2 yards a punt. Vontez Duff is deep for Notre Dame. This is not a good punt by Skaggs. Duff picks it up on the bounce. Sidestepped a couple of would-be tacklers and then fumbles the ball. He recovered it, but he did bobble it there for a moment. But he did recover it. An 11-yard return after the punt covered 45 yards. And Notre Dame starts from the Navy 49 with Fathers, Black, and Mahan, seniors up front on their offensive line. Jeff Fain, of course, the anchor from that center spot. Backs and receivers, Holiday and Jones starting. Tony Fisher injured, will not play today. Neither will David Givens. So Lipinski, Battle, Hunter, and Owens, four seniors, amongst the backs and receivers to start the game. Hand off to Julius Jones. Cut back and made it down to the 42-yard line before he's top, stopped by Letter Thomas from the strong safety spot. He is the leading tackler this season for the midshipmen. Wagner, Zetz, Brindell, and Butenmuller up front. With Rhino, Elliott, Hamilton, Brazier, Clark, Clarkson, and Thomas, who made that last stop, and is with now 76 tackles, the leading stopper on the midshipman defense. Second down and three. Here's the option, Notre Dame style. Holiday keeps. Got away from two tacklers, then spun down by Clarkson, the free safety. 
who prevented the touchdown. Paul Clarkson finally getting Carlisle Holiday down. Well, two plays there, and both tackles were made by safeties. Again, a little bit of a problem on defense. You know, the, the problem with, with Navy's defense, most of their leading tacklers are in the defensive backfield. Oftentimes, you, know, you have maybe the free safety use your leading tackle, which isn't a bad thing. But four out of the top five tacklers for Navy are in the defensive backfield. And thus far, two tackles by defensive backs thus far in this game. That last one after a gain of 13. Hand off to Jones. Julius Powers Jones. ahead to about the 25-yard line. He got four or five yards on first down. Tom, we, we've talked about uh, Notre Dame being a heavy favorite. They should. They, they're, they're highly recruited players. They're uh, very athletic players. They outweigh Navy by an average of maybe 40, 50 pounds a man. I'll be very surprised if you if you don't see Notre Dame run this ball 60, 65 times today. Second and seven for the Irish. Holiday hands to Jones. Julius Jones can't Julius spin Jones. away from Dustin Elliott. It'll be third down. Yeah, just talked about the size of the lines a moment ago. Uh, you see the, the differential, 312 down here. We go Kurt Ballers and going against 255. It's just, you know, it's just a size mismatch. But nonetheless, it always seems like these academies, they've played Notre Dame tough over the last five, six years I've watched them play because these guys, uh, thank goodness, don't ever quit. Third down and four. Battles in motion. Holiday oh. hit hard and dropped at the 25-yard line. Oh. It was Clyde Clark who had a form tackle on Carlisle Holiday. You don't make a tackle any better than that. Yeah, yeah remember, Carlisle Holiday is not an easy guy to bring down as we've seen this year. Rick Lance, the uh, head coach, was saying about Clyde Clark, his cornerback, he's oh. our best corner, uh, our best defensive back this year because he, he tackles well and he covers well. Clark, a junior from Austin, Texas. Fifth leading tackler for the midshipman. Stephen F. Austin High School in Austin, Texas. Here's Nick Seta with a field goal attempt, 41 yards. And Seta's kick is perfect. Seta now is missed only one field goal. 13 uh, yard return. Number 45 right here, Matt Sarr. He's one of these walk-on players the last two years that have been on all the kickoffs. His job is to fight through guys. Sometimes he'll break the wedge. Occasionally he gets knocked down, slips, but he gets right back up, and he's going to get. He's going to pad those uh, statistics and get part of that tag. <laughs> Great tradition of walk-ons at Notre Dame who contribute mightily to the Irish. Here's the option. Madden with a pitch. Pitch is to McDonald, and he is. Stopped after a gain of one or two by Tario Harrison, the Irish leading tackler this season. Did you see some other scores? Kentucky with a big lead of Tennessee. That would be a shocker. The yeah, balls have beaten the Wildcats 16 consecutive times. Yeah, you Kentucky guys, I know. I know all about you. <laughs> Lou Holtz leading Clemson. Big rivalry games today. Mm -hmm. Georgia on top of Ole Miss. Let me know how that SC UCLA game is going. What'd you talk about? <laughs> Madden. After the fake, retreats to pass. Chase from the pocket, shoots it complete. Chandler Sims with a diving catch and a Navy first down. Clifford Jefferson covering for Notre Dame, but Sims goes downstairs to make the grab. Yeah, Chandler Sims is a really good receiver and a very good target. I mean, this, this is a guy who's 6'4", obviously athletic. A lot of times guys that tall don't adjust to the ball particularly well, but Chandler Sims made a nice catch there. Can also throw the ball through a touchdown pass early in the year, too. Nine-yard gain, Navy first down, option. Here's the pitch to Lane, and Lane crosses the 40 down to about the 43-yard line, tackled by Jefferson and Watson. Okay, they run this flexible, no-huddle offense. Brian Madden gets the signal from the sideline. Mitch Ware, the quarterback coach, gives it to him, who signals it in. And they usually have, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds or so when it's signaled in, and if he, he looks to the sideline again for audibles, he's still looking to the sideline for audibles. Football, and Notre Dame has it. Picked up on the fly by Jerome Sapp, who will score. Sapp for the touchdown. Well, we talked to Jerome Sapp yesterday. He said, my job is to make sure that quarterback doesn't duck in and gain some extra yards. But quarterback didn't have a chance to duck in. He didn't have the ball in his arms. Madden and Lane on the attempted handoff. And the ball just laying there. 
Yeah, and that wasn't one of those uh, option plays. That was a designed call. Sometimes on option plays, you, you're not sure if you're going to get it or not. But Lane just missed that that handoff that was well I was put right in his stomach, I think, by Madden. But an easy score for the Irish. They haven't had many of those this year. 38-yard fumble return by Jerome Sapp as Seta attempts the extra point. And it is good. Well, Navy had gotten a little going. They had moved the ball, and suddenly the turnover results in seven Notre Dame points to... ...caused the fumble. In, in, in reality, it was a very good defensive play by Cedric Hilliard. Caused the fumble, then his teammate Jerome Sapp picks the ball up easily, races in the end zone, Notre Dame up by 10. There's Jerome, officially a 39-yard fumble return for a touchdown. The last time they did it uh, was last year. The Irish are up 10-0. Once again, deeper this time, laying in the end zone, will down it. So the touchback gives the ball to Navy at the 20-yard line as Brian Madden tries to rally his troops. Madden, an interesting uh, young man, a senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, ironically enough, went to Eisenhower High School. We want to bring that up before they play Army. <laughs> All-state quarterback and safety, and also an All-state wrestler. In fact, a state champion wrestler was 32-0. He missed spring practice in the first two games of this season after a, a prank. He and some friends swiped a parking meter from downtown Baltimore, put in the room, got caught, and was suspended for the spring and for the first two games this season. He keeps the ball here and gets maybe a yard. Stopped by the center of the Notre Dame line. Well, we talked about how, how big he is for a quarterback, part linebacker. He's 220 pounds. And, and, and look at the size of their own linebackers, 225, 230, 220. I mean, he is a one tough physical guy. But he's got a he's got to get a little bit of running room, which he hasn't gotten this far. Here's the option to pitch to Gene Reese. And Reese has a nice game. Knocked out of bounds by Vontez Duff. <laughs> until he gained about six yards. And the Notre Dame defensive players talked to us this week. What they want to see is Brian Madden pitch the ball. I mean, they, they think he, and indeed he is, their most dangerous weapon. They want him to pitch the ball and run sideways. So now third and three for the midshipman. Give it to the first man through, and there's nothing there. Absolutely not, nothing. Did you hear a whistle blowing, by the way, down there somewhere? I did. I think that was in the band. Maybe. Mar Marlon Terrell carries the ball for Navy and gets uh, very little. Cedric Hilliard again inside making making the play. Marlon Terrell getting a very little room to run inside. It is a true option. They do read on it, and uh, that time Madden read it, gave it to Terrell, but not much there. So Skaggs will punt again to Vontez Duff. Nice snap. Skaggs, left-footed boot. Duff says stay away from it, takes a good Navy bounce. And will roll dead at about the 19-yard line. That's a 53-yard kick for John Skaggs. at about the 25-yard line by Paul Clarkson. Back to a number 16, Shalimar Brazier. An unusual first name, Shalimar. In fact, there's a perfume named Shalimar, as you may know. So we said, now, Shalimar, how did you get that first name? He said his mom named him after an African king. But I also smell good. <laughs> Got to be had both covered. I thought it was his, uh, the answer to the question, hey, wh why did you come to the Naval Academy? You don't, you don't hear this answer too often. He said, well, so I think they have a really strong engineering department. You don't, when we talk to guys all over the country, you don't often hear that, do you? The give is to Jones, bounced off. A pile of tacklers and then falls forward for another three yards or so. He'll be short of the first down. It'll bring up a third down play for the Irish. Thomas on the tackle for Navy. Uh, again, another, def another defensive back making a tackle for, for Navy. Giving up 242 rushing yards a game, which is 112th in the nation of 115 teams. And Notre Dame has not attempted a pass yet. And as I said, I think you're going to see a lot of run from the Irish today. Under six minutes to go first quarter. And the Irish still have to put it in the air. But 
They did get the one touchdown on the turnover. Julius Jones will be stopped short of the first down, so the Navy defense makes a play. And it is Pete Butenmuller, the junior from Wellington, Florida, that comes up with the stop for the Navy. You know, for, as, a, as a playmaker, Pete Butenmuller is probably one of the big-time guys. Number 96, playing a defensive end now. Kind of comes down the line here, playing right defensive end. You know, he played some inside tackle for them this year. He's their biggest defensive lineman. He's only 260 pounds. But uh, Rick Lance said to us, this week, hey, we really like him. We think he can be a very good pass rusher for us over the next few years as a defensive end. There's Butenmuller. Went to uh, run out of high school football against Brennan Curtin. An offensive tackle for Notre Dame. And he did manage to stop the Irish short of the first down. So it will be a punting situation. Joey Hillbold is the Irish punter. Gene Gene Reese, Reese, and Gene Reese is deep Hill for Bowl, Navy. Hillbold punts a nice punt. Reese retreats to his 25 and is immediately taken down. Vontez Duff streaking downfield on special teams with a beautiful tackle. A 46-yard punt with no return thanks to the special teams play of Vontez Duff. And the Irish lead the Navy 10-0. As the midshipmen have a first down play, here's the option for a loss on the play as the Irish were all over him on that option play. Daryl Campbell got there first. I mean, we were talking to Jake Bowen this week, and we asked him, hey, what was that, that little uh, rubber band around your left, ref, left wrist about? Well, he said, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> See, I want to get... Six more months and how, ten days, I yeah. think he said, of imprisonment. Yes, he said, what? Well, he said, no until graduation. That's, that's when I finish. So it's oh, only yeah. six months and eight days now. Here's a wide open. Wide open Reese, and Reese cutting to the sideline, finally tracked down at the 38-yard line by Jerome Sapp as Reese streaking downfield wide open, and Madden found him for a gain of 43 yards. He's, he's right in here. He's just going to come right down here. Mike Mark Hudspeth, the offensive coordinator, said this is our most talented offensive player. And then they try to find some ways to get him the ball, certainly as a runner, this time as a receiver. He had Sapp turned around backwards, and a 43-yard gain. Big play by the Navy offense. Madden still has it. Ryan Madden racing to the end zone. Touchdown! You know, just when you think you're going to knock Navy out in the end of the game, and I have seen Navy and Army and all the academies play Notre Dame for years, you can't. These guys just don't get knocked out. Thank goodness, because that's uh, the way to defend the country as well. But it, it, they set up with a pass, and they come right back with a quarterback keeper. Watch the lane here. Shane Walton made a stab at yeah. him, couldn't get him. But he, he's like uh, Holiday. You cannot arm tackle this guy. And the extra point from David Hills is through. And just like that, Navy on a first down play, the option stopped for a loss. They come back with a long Madden completion, and then Madden keeps himself for 38 yards. So Bob Davies sees his defense surrender a three-play, 77-yard drive that took a minute and two seconds. But, you know, I don't think Bob Davies surprised. You heard him talk to Jim yeah. Gray before the game. You know, we, we expect these guys to come out. Again, you're going to see a real lane as he comes here and runs down there. First to fake to the fullback, which you've had a little bit of a good block there, the kickout block, good block by the wide receiver. And then here's a guy 220 pounds outrunning defenders, uh, defensive backs. Took a real nice angle to run away from the corner. Ron Israel was in hot yeah. pursuit and couldn't catch him. But, you know, he's got the power of a fullback and enough speed to uh, outrun safeties. He's a, he's a good player. So suddenly it is... 10-7 Notre Dame as Madden gets some instruction on the sideline after correcting that three-play drive and scoring the TD himself. For Madden, that is his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. He averages, what, 127 yards rushing a game as a quarterback. You mentioned earlier, leads the nation uh, for rushing as a quarterback. So Hill's getting ready to kick off for Navy. 
And Julius Jones, along with Vontez Duff, are deep for the Irish. David uh, Hills, the kicker, was uh, originally recruited as a lacrosse player. In fact, he played Navy lacrosse yeah. for a season. Well, he's got a brother on, on the uh, lacrosse team. He was a prep All-American in lacrosse, mm -hmm. was Hills. Uh, in his days in Latham, New York. Here's the boot by Hills. Julius Jones from the three. Jones wrapped up early, taken down at about the 16-yard line. Brian Stan with a beautiful open field special teams tackle after a 13-yard return. Log on to NBCSports.com and click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, for in-depth coverage of the Fighting Irish. Check out expert analysis by Pat mm -hmm. and vote for the Irish MVP. Plus, after the game, view video highlights and hear audio interviews with Coach Davey and key Irish players, all at NBCSports.com. I'm going to give it away, but I believe for Anthony Weaver. Anthony Weaver, you have nice, one? Well, that's a nice choice. You can give me time to think about it, but... Okay, uh, well, I'll give you some... I'll give you some... Get to get back to me by the fourth quarter, would you? And a, uh, and a senior to boot, if you take that into account. Absolutely. Here's the option from Carlisle Holiday and a pitch to Jones. Julius Jones corralled and fumbles the ball, and Navy has it. Unbelievable. Buten Mueller. Yeah. He's the stud on the defensive line, and he recovers the big turnover. So one key fumble apiece. Hey, Julius Jones has dropped the ball several times this year. I mean, I don't think this is a violent hit. Number 50, Ben Matthews gets to Holiday. And you can make a strong case that the turnovers yep. have been Notre Dame's undoing this season. That's their 20th turnover of the season. And it was Brindell, number 54, who caused the fumble. Brindell, he stripped it with his right hand. Right. A guy that the coaches say is always hustling. Brindell and makes plays with that hustle. Undersized, but all over the place. That's the 20th turnover by Notre Dame. They went all last season with only eight in NCAA record. Here's the option. Matt keeps, lowers his head, and bounces to the 10 perhaps the nine with Grant Irons and Shane Walton getting him to the turf turnover story coming into today they just had their 20th but tied the NCAA record with just 80 a year ago manufactured nine wins largely because of that and special teams that uh, it's been a disaster here and you know they fumbled sometimes when they really haven't been hit they dropped just dropped the ball a few times when uh, it hasn't been stripped like that that play really Madden changing the play on second and seven. It's the handoff, the inside handoff to Terrell. So when they have gotten to the corner, though, it looks like there's a lane. When, when Madden comes down there and he gets there, it, it looks like he's going to gain eight, ten yards. They've set up that option play pretty doggone well. No huddle. Madden looking to the sideline for the play when it's when the coaches look at the defense and think the play is all right, they point at him, and then he goes. Otherwise, they'll signal a change. Yeah, you'll see him look over to the sideline even when he's down in the goal line. Madden to pass. In trouble, throws it away. Well, that should be grounded. He was in the pocket. Yeah. No receiver close. Grant Irons putting the pressure on in his final home game. Do you, you know... They play Notre Dame plays man for man uh, coverage. Vontez Duff, very good coverage on Sims. It's Clifford Jefferson on the other side. Number 15, he's got his cover. And, you know, good decision. I still think it was uh, should have been intentional ground. Yeah. But no call. There hasn't been a penalty yet. Here's the attempt by Hills. And from 24 yards, it is good. This was the very first offensive down and intercepts in the end zone against AM. And Julius drops there against Boston College a couple of weeks ago. And in their last home game two weeks ago, Ryan Grant is uh, forced to fumble and they return to 80 yards for a touchdown, does Tennessee. So that has really been largely the difference in their season. Jones fumble converted into a Navy field goal to tie the game at 10. He's back to receive the kickoff from Hills. Quickly, the game turns around. Yeah. Navy back on their heels, dominated by Notre Dame, and suddenly a touchdown drive of three plays and a turnover, and we're tied. Here's Jones. Jones behind the wedge. Breaks 
free, trying to make amends for his fumble, and is tripped up. I swear, they always. Hills, number four, to the you know, very athletic stop. Back him like a good lacrosse player that he is. <laughs> Jones cut back on him, and he still managed to wrap him up. And now Terrence Howard replaces Jones in the backfield. He's a tailback. Here's Howard with his first carry, and he breaks free. Finally tackled by Clyde Clark in the secondary after a gain of about 12 yards and a Notre Dame first down. Only the 10th play of this first quarter for Notre Dame. Navy's run 16. And, and you know what, though? I think it's the fourth tackle of the 10 plays by defensive back by Navy. Only the second first down for Notre Dame. Remember, they got a touchdown on a fumble recovery. First down, and Notre Dame goes with a no huddle. Howard again. Again has room up the middle and is stopped after a gain of about eight yards by Mark Georgie from the secondary again of the midshipman. Yeah, nice block by Jeff Fain, the center, who's Mark had a Georgie. pretty solid season for the Irish. On Centeri. On the you know, they, they really mixed up this offensive line. Ballers, Black, Fane, Mahan, and Curtin from left to right. They really changed those guys around, try to get some bigger bodies inside. Second down and two. Holiday play action fake. Notre Dame's first pass of the game. Holiday, okay. it's intercepted. Yeah. Intended for Hunter, intercepted by Brazier. Shalimar Brazier with a Navy interception. Oh, and that smells good to him, too, doesn't it? And that is a is a poor decision by Holiday. Slot Battle and Hunter. The exact slot receivers to the right. Battle on the inside. Hunter on the out. I mean, and again, there was a free safety behind that. So even if he had beaten, even if Hunter had beaten Brazier, there was a safety there to make the play. So their 21st turnover. I mean, that's one you I don't think you can throw with a free safety deep unless the guy has completely beaten early in the route. Salomar not only smelling good but looking good mm -hmm. with the interception. Madden well defended that time by the Notre Dame defense. Grant Irons was in there having a good first quarter of his final home game. Yeah, we talked to Grant again this week. One of the co-captains. It's kind of nostalgic about his last uh, Last home game. That has been an unbelievable experience. I wish you would have obviously won a few more games, but definitely very happy uh, with his uh, with his time spent here at Notre Dame. Madden looked like he bobbled the ball and then sends it over the head of everyone. And intended for Bailey with Walton and Jefferson double covering. You know, they run this play action. Uh, the, the one long pass they already had was off of the option fake. It didn't bother yeah. you. Just no, made just, a fake, huh? Yeah, just a little fake to the, to the fullback. A funny throwing motion, but if you get, you know, your arms and hands get hit that post as much as his <laughs> does, sometimes you throw it kind of funny. Third and 11, and he's in the shotgun here. And he's going to do a quarterback draw that gets nowhere. Stopped for a loss by Daryl Campbell. So Notre Dame was ready for the draw play yep. from Madden. And in the final seconds of the first quarter, Notre Dame will set to receive the punt. You know, John Skaggs, their punter, seems to take an extra step when he punts. I mean, if you're going to try to block a punter, th this would be a guy that think you could, you could try to block. But uh, before Skaggs can punt from his own end zone, the quarter will come to a close. Turnover marred first quarter. In 10 game and Skaggs will Julius Jones the deep man for Notre Dame Skaggs line drive punt Jones is going to let it bounce and he will watch it roll dead at about the 42 yard line the punt covered 45 yards with no return and now Carlisle Holiday leads the Notre Dame defense back onto the field let's go down to Jim Gray all right thank you very much Tom obviously this is a very big game for Navy of course the 75th meeting against Notre Dame but they got another one coming up and of course you and Pat had a great opportunity this week to go over to the Navy campus and, and to visit up there and uh, here's one of their football you guys were in the weight room and I think you were astonished to see that on all of the weights and not only where it said Navy and the emblem, there was a message on all the weights. Well, it's also on their practice footballs. <laughs> December 1st, beat Army. Yeah. Tom? All right, Jim. Here's 
give to Terrence Howard. Ouch. Smacked down hard by Letter Thomas after a pretty good game. Uh, not only do they have uh, beat Army on just about everything you can see at Annapolis, but uh, the plebes at any time might be required to sound off. Go Navy, beat Army. Look, look at the running start mm. that Thomas had. And, you know, he's their leading tackler by a long shot. That was a shot. Yeah. Second down and four. Howard again. And stopped close to the first down marker. You know, Tom, talking about the Army-Navy game coming up December 1st, I've been lucky enough to do a few of those. That, to me, there's no better football game than the Army-Navy game. Not necessarily the quality of the game, but the meaning of the game to the players. And particularly, I think this year, in, the, in, a, in a time of war, it's going to take on uh, even more significance for those guys. But it's a phenomenal game. So you're going to measure for the first down. You had a quick look at the Navy interim coach Rick Lance a former Notre Dame assistant just short as you see and uh, there's Lance who uh, was on the verge of retirement he's been 35 years in college football 39 years overall and he says there's only one job he would take and he was hired as the defensive coordinator at Navy by Charlie Weatherby and then asked to be interim coach and he would like the job on a permanent basis and looking forward to that battle against Army the hundred second meeting between the two teams Army's won 48 Navy 46 or been seven ties the fullback Lipinski with a rare carry results in a Notre Dame first down gain of a couple of yards and Lance saying he treasured his years here at Notre Dame as an assistant coach there he is, 84 and 85. Oh, it's on uh, Jerry Faust's staff. There's uh, Faust, the head coach, in the center there with Rick Lance. Lance. Marine, too. Was uh, four years in the Marine yeah. Corps. Julius Jones stopped for no gain by the Navy defense. I, I thought the great story Rick Lance told us this week was when uh, he was the head coach at Bridgeton Academy up in Maine, and he said, you know, I was the staff of one, but my wife used to help me line the field. And so they were lining the field before one of the games and they realized after they had lined the field that one of the end zones was only eight yards. She had missed, uh, <laughs> just missed by two yards. <laughs> he has a varied resume. He's been an assistant at Virginia, Louisville, Notre Dame, Navy, Georgia Tech, Miami, Buffalo, Boston University, and the New England in the NFL. Holiday has it knocked loose. Wow. Elliott with a big hit. Uh, Dustin Elliott. Holiday was able to get the ball back. Yeah, and looking around. Dustin Elliott is a plea. You know, one of those rare pleas. A plea was a freshman at the academy. And he just comes flying in there, which is a, uh, maybe wants to be a pilot at, at some future date. <laughs> or a plane, even. But a perfectly timed blitz as a middle linebacker. The plea nearly makes the recovery as well. But I, I tell you, these guys are flying around. Other than Army, this game means more to them than anything. Two Notre Dame passes, one intercepted, and one a near turnover. Holiday is going to run with it. Now he drops back and sends it downfield wide open. And the catch made by Campbell. First catch of the season for Carlos Campbell, a freshman from Hampton, Virginia, goes for 32 yards before he's tackled by Shalimar Brazier. And it may sound like a, an oxymoron, but this is kind of a, a patient scramble, if there is such a thing, because at any moment you thought he was going to run, but he fe felt that perhaps I could get a big play out of the passing game. He probably could have run for 8 or 10 yards. And then Campbell, the receiver, and a feel his way down the sideline. So, uh, you know, a heads-up play by Holiday, and then a nice catch by Campbell. First down at the Navy 18. Jones, nothing there. Lost back to the 20-yard line. He lost a couple of yards. Dan Rhino, senior linebacker from Gibbsboro, New Jersey. Well, Rhino's got two brothers who are Academy graduates, one who's a Navy SEAL, one who's a Navy pilot. And it's kind of a theme throughout this Navy team. There's lots of you know sons and grandsons and brothers that come to the Naval Academy. His brother Tom is the, the SEAL and Dave is the pilot. And Rhino with a tackle for a loss. Holiday, play action fake, rolls to pass. Under pressure, complete the tight end Owens. 
Jackson stops Big Paul o or John Owens, but Owens has a first down inside the five. It's a 15-yard gain. Yeah, a real, here's the tight end just going to slip over here. Nice call by Kevin Rogers. Great execution. And again, the flow goes one way. You bring your quarterback and your tight end back across the field. And he was wide open for the first down. First and goal from the Navy four-yard line. Navy and Notre Dame tied at 10. Ninth play of the Notre Dame drive upcoming. Wishbone backfield. Holiday gives to Howard. Terrence Howard. Touchdown. Well, Bob Davies' team responded. You know, you, know you, you worry about your team sometimes. You get up to a 10-point lead over a, you know, an opponent. You think you're going to run over it. How are you going to respond? They come back 10-10, and boom, the Irish come, uh, come up with a good drive themselves. Terrence Howard with his second touchdown run of the season. That one from four yards out. A nine-play drive that covered 58 yards in just over four minutes. Nick Seta with the extra point attempt. Adam Tibble, the holder. And I know. I mean, this is what sets claps him, collapses him, and it allows Terrence Howard to squeeze in behind him. Since he said to us this week, you know, I, I really consider myself an offensive lineman. Right. Yeah, he knows a fullback. <laughs> There's the drive after. Remember, uh, Elliott had caused Carlisle Holiday to fumble. Carlisle able to fall on it, and after that, Notre Dame goes 50 yards for the score. Tony Lane with the set up kickoff. Lane collared it about the 25-yard line by Pierre Antoine on special teams for the Irish. Here's Venuto with his 68 jersey on yeah. now. He plays both tackle and tight end. Well, well, you know, Matthew Sarp, number 45, we watched him a little, little bit earlier. I mean, you're going to take some shots when you're, when you're running right down the middle of the field. But he just kind of keeps on coming. Oops. Ouch. <laughs> that was yeah. a shot. That, uh, We've you know, seen some shots today, yeah, mostly absolutely. delivered by Navy, actually. Yeah. But Matthew Sarge, one of those guys just loves football. Look at this set now. We've got five wide receivers, or five receivers, and then Madden keeps, fumbles the ball, and Notre Dame appears to have it. Let's see. Now they scramble for it. Unbelievable. Great play by Shane Walton, though. Shane Walton broke that thing up. They wanted to have this quick, quick screen out to all those guys. Shane Walton read it. Still uh, unstacking yeah. players. Yeah. And Notre Dame has the ball. Yeah, well, you're going to see Shane Walton right here. He sees what's going on. Watch how he just kind of breaks this play up. See, that was supposed to be a screen there. Walton takes it away. Then Madden just, he wasn't hit. He just dropped it. Here it is. And, well, he, he took yeah, a little yeah. bit of a hit there and couldn't control it as he went down. And then all blue jerseys around it. Yeah, it started with Walton and ended up with Toriel Harrison I think, making the recovery. So good scouting and uh, Walton recognizing mm -hmm. from the formation what play was coming and had Madden thrown it, Walton had it yeah. right in his sights. Notre Dame team trying to take advantage of the Navy turnover with a first down run by Julius Jones. Julius Jones. Leonard Thomas, another Navy tackle. And when we call his name, that means it was in the secondary and it means a pretty good gain on first down as we come to the 10 minute mark in the second quarter. You notice when Julius Jones was uh, hitting traffic at that time, securing it with both arms. Uh, ordinarily, when you fumble around here in South Bend, you don't see much playing time afterwards. In fact, it was Terrence Howard that played tailback on that last scoring drive by the Irish. Maybe showing blitz. Give is to Jones, hit behind the line, and managed to get to the 30-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. That time it was Matt Brooks that made the tackle for the midshipman. Matt Brooks, a safety. Once again, also Dustin Elliott was in there as well. That middle linebacker has been pretty active inside, number 55 down here. See the other scores going by. Mississippi State and Arkansas tied in the SEC. Third down and seven. Short drop, Holiday incomplete. That was close to being uh, too early as Jenkins and David Bush arrived, uh, the ball and Bush arriving at the same time intended for Jenkins and incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Bush plays, uh, you know, a zone defense there pretty well. He had a nice cushion. 
you know, is looking at the quarterback as much as receiver. As soon as he saw the three-step drop, he drives and then knocks it away. It looks like Notre Dame's going for it here on fourth and seven. Fourth and seven from the Navy 30. Notre Dame leading 17-10. Nine minutes left till halftime. You know, the last thing you say as a quarterback to the receivers, make sure you run at least eight or nine yards. Play clock ticking down. Holiday drops back to pass. Across the middle, Hunter can't hold on. Incomplete, and Navy holds. They'll take over on down. And Rick Lance should be happy. Good pass rush, I think, really caused that incompletion. Because Holiday had a dance around in the pocket and really threw it off his back foot because there were some people at his feet. Was Javen Hunter, number 21, running the crossing route? He, did, he would have had the first down, tough adjustment, but it really the, the early pass rush, I thought, caused the incompletion. Then hit by Clyde Park, just after the ball got there, could not hold on, and Navy holds on down. So the Madden turnover is not costly for the midshipmen. They'll take over at their own 30, trailing by seven. Bob Davey saw his offense sputter a bit after they got the turnover. First down play. Madden going to run the option. There's the pitch to Reese. And Reese ridden out of bounds with a loss in the play. He lost three or four yards. Shane Walton again says nothing doing on the option his way today. I, I tell you, if there's a uh, MVP B position, Shane Walton gets it. I mean, I, I said Anthony Weaver I voted for, but Shane Walton is a guy fights off a block there, then makes the tackle. And this year he's had to cover some of the premier receivers in the country, which he's done very, very well. Yeah, the Irish are pretty strong at corner with, with Walton and Vontez Duff. Here's a four wide receiver spread formation now from the shotgun. Lanes in motion. Madden rolls toward the strength of the formation and tosses it downfield. Catch by Gaddy. Jeff Gaddy makes a nice over-the-shoulder grab in front of Vontez Duff, and Navy has a first down, 27-yard gain. That is a terrific catch and a pretty good throw by Brian Madden. Rolling to his left. Get right over the shoulder. Mark Hudspeth, the offensive coordinator, was saying, geez, I wish we had Jeff Gaddy as a receiver in our program for a few more years. He moves from defensive back to wide receiver, and he's their leading receiver this year at 21. His first catch today. Madden in trouble. Throws it. And another. No, Bailey did not hold on. Did he or did he? Let's no, see. I think they gave it to him. Okay, he caught him. Yep. Man, the Navy receivers are uh, sticky fingered today. <laughs> Dominic Bailey. Yeah, you're right inside, but you know what, what Madden does well is he waits. See, he, he waited for the, him to get past that linebacker. That was Tario Harrison. Wait for the linebacker. Stretches out. The ball hit the ground there or not. It looks like it did not. He yeah. tucked it away. Secured it. So first down Navy now at the Notre Dame 35-yard line. 17-10 Irish. Madden changing the play on instructions from the sideline. Out of the call from the sideline. Trips to the right of the formation. Fake it, keep it. Madden looked like he actually wanted to hand it off, but yeah. it was too far away, so kept it in desperation. <laughs> Tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern, NBC brings you the ultimate test of human endurance, the Ironman Triathlon World Championship. Tim DeBoom, the top American hopeful, some of the best athletes in the world, in swimming, biking, and then running a marathon all in one day. The Ironman Triathlon tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern, here on NBC. Walton fighting off tacklers back to the 45-yard line. So you saw a, in this series a smart play by Walton when he broke up that screen pass. We saw a physical play when he made the tackle after fighting the block. And this time in this series, he makes a great interception. Reed the pattern, jumps the out, and Shane Walton has done just about everything in this series. He's just throwing. It's not 11 on 11. Jones. Again. And got a 10-yard gain. Lipinski once again clearing the pass. Buried. Lipinski, the junior fullback. Just kind of buried right here again. He's 245 pounds, and he, you know, he gets that body on you. He sticks. You know, guys just don't seem to slip off Lipinski much. 
Dad was a player in the 70s here. Second down, less than a yard. Two tight end formation, Owens and Godsey. Holiday to Jones. He has the first down to the 27-yard line as Notre Dame tries to convert the turnover, the interception by Walton, into points. Well, I said at the very beginning of the show for Navy, the heavy underdog to win this game, they're going to have to win the battle of turnovers plus three. Well, they've already turned the ball over three times in the first half. Notre Dame has returned that favor two times. But, uh, you know, it, it's tough. It's going to be very difficult for Navy to beat these guys if they keep turning this thing over. Head coach, uh, interim head coach Rick Lance is also the defensive coordinator for Navy. Title he had before the firing of Coach Weatherby. Short drop. Holiday has a wide open Rodimer. And he's taken out of bounds. We have about five white jerseys. You can hear the, the leather popping over there. Shalimar Brazier was the first to hit him, I think. A big cushion for Rodimer. Good call. Eight of seven. And Brazier just trying to keep it to a five yard play. Could have been called a, a penalty there as a late hit. There has not been a penalty called in the first half. But you wouldn't say they were playing mistake free no, football yeah, since there have been five turnovers. Five turnovers. <laughs> Quarterback draw. Carlisle Holiday dropped back at the 21 yard line. Holiday. Thrown for a loss by Dan Person, another Dan Person. player with a great Navy, Navy history and uh, a defensive end history in his family, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, six, there are seven kids in the family, six of them boys. Five out of the six are defensive ends. He's the third person uh, of the person family <laughs> at, uh, at the Naval Academy and played defensive uh, end. He's got a brother, Andy and Chris. He's got another brother who's playing defensive end at Penn, and then the black sheet of the family, uh, Joe, I guess, is a uh, uh, he's a defensive end. Plus, his Fran is a tight end right. in South Carolina. He's the uh, traitor of the bunch. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of defensive ends. Joe's being recruited by Navy a high school player. As Julius Jones picks up another Notre Dame first down. When we talked to Person this week, he said, if, "What would you give your? What advice would you give your brother Joe if he comes to the?" Naval Academy next year as a plea, but he says, just don't stand out that plea year. <laughs> you don't want to be noticed that first year at the Academy. That plea summer, especially when they get the uh, intensive training and indoctrination. Tennessee has uh, come back to take the lead on Kentucky. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah. very much expected. <laughs> Terrence Howard, <laughs> short game. Hit hard by Dustin Elliott. Elliott, uh, as you mentioned earlier, a plebe. Yeah. Not too far removed from Newcastle, Pennsylvania High School. And uh, he's had a pretty good game. Yeah, and Rick Lance said to us this week about, about Elliott, you know, a lot of plebes don't play much around here, but he, the, the game just seems to make sense to him. He's got him an instinctive inside linebacker. Second down to nine for Notre Dame. From the 13 yard line of the midshipman. Play action fake. Paul Allen Holiday sends a bad pass toward his fullback, Lipinski. If he knew how rare those <laughs> opportunities were for Lipinski to have his hands on the ball, he would have thrown a better pass. They, they try to give Lipinski the ball once every papal election. That's, that's the rule. <laughs> so they send up for white smoke when he smoke. catches one. But he was, he, look how open he was here in the flat. I mean, if he, gets, if he gets that ball thrown to him on the move, maybe he gets into the end zone. And you, every once in a while you feed him the ball because he blocks so well. Well, the good news is that the tight ends and fullbacks are being utilized, which uh, for much of the season they weren't. That changed, what, about the BC game, I guess. From the shotgun this time on third and long. Holiday. I don't think it was a plan draw, but he's still got it, looking for the end zone and tripped up at the five. It'll be another fourth down for Bob Davey. Another decision upcoming. Dan Rhino made the tackle, and he just said, go for it. They went for it once before on fourth down and did not convert. Here they come in. Two tight ends coming in. Lipinski coming in. 
Fourth down in the yard from the Navy five. And again, when you think you outweigh the, the Navy team by 45, 50 pounds a man, you think you'd expect a power play, wouldn't you? You would. Our backfield, that wishbone full house backfield. Linton Thomas again. Oh, man. And about four of his uh, teammates, yeah. Elliott. You know, Navy may be small, but they will hit you. Well, they are smart players. They are determined players. And they're going to give you everything they have on first or fourth down. They stuffed the Irish on out. take over the ball second fourth down stop for Navy and you don't expect their defense to be making the big plays Madden keeps Madden. stacked up as you see the uh, mass tacklers right there in the middle of the defense you near the conclusion of today's game we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each three. university's general scholarship fund second and seven Hands off this time to Bryce McDonald, the junior from Springfield, Missouri. It'll bring up a third down for Navy. And Tom, you make a good point about Navy's defense. You know, they've been giving up almost 500 yards a game, 485 yards a game to some, uh, you know, less than stellar opponents, as you might imagine. And yet the defense now has really uh, done a pretty good job. Navy faces a third down, and with 2.24 left, Notre Facing a crucial third and three. Down to Tony Lane. And Lane on a sort of a counter play has the Navy first down at the 20-yard line. Stopped by J or Abram Elam for Notre Dame. Elam on the tackle for Notre Dame. Eight of six. First and ten. So Navy with the clock ticking down towards two minutes with a first down. Spot the ball just short of their own 20. They trail. 17-10. Here's the change of plays by Brian Madden. Option play. Madden keeps. Ducks under. Keeps his balance going and scrambles to the 25-yard line. Tripped up by Anthony Weaver. And now with under two minutes to play till halftime. And coming up at intermission, the Sun America Halftime Report. Anna Storm will have all the scores and highlights. A look at last night's NBA action and a preview of tomorrow's NASCAR Napa 500. All that and more at halftime on the Sun America Halftime Report. Second and five for Navy. 90 seconds left in the first half. Option play. Matt faked a pitch. Held on. Watson. Grant Irons is in there, And too. Grant Irons wrapped him up. Irons uh, having one of his better games in his last Notre Dame Stadium appearance. Very definitely. And uh, you saw Irons signaling for the timeout. He's one of the captains, and they get the timeout, stopping the clock with a minute 12. And coming to NBA. You see next Sunday at 4 Eastern, the Bud Light World Professional Bull Riding Challenge. You wonder what it's like to try to control 2,000 pounds of fire-breathing bull? The Bud Light World Challenge next Sunday at... Navy with another first... Madden keeps and then pitches at the last second. It's Reese... And he stopped at the 45-yard line by Elam. And he was one player away from racing for a touchdown, as it was at cover 22. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, Elam saves it right here. Otherwise, it, it, he's gone. No, he looked up a little bit further. But perfectly timed pitch by Brian Mann. There comes Elam, who saved a lot of big plays for the Irish this year. A lot of turnovers he's created, too. Counterplay, Reese. Gets him at the 15-yard line. 
Uh, what a sequence of plays. The, the option play into the boundary, then the counter play back to Reese, their most explosive player. Good block inside by Donnie Fricks, I believe it was, number 39, right there. Yeah, Fricks is the one that really kind of set him loose. And, you know, a hustling Shane Walton trying to go for the tomahawk shot to create the fumble. 42-yard gain. Navy first down, only 40 seconds left in the half. And Madden keeps and gets maybe a yard. They're going to use one of their two timeouts. Remember back on their first possession, they had to call a timeout with a mix-up at their five-yard line. That cost them one of the timeouts, and now they have only one remaining. Coming up on NBC. NBC Tuesday from Puerto Rico, the concert that made an island go wild. Jennifer Lopez in her first concert ever. NBC Tuesday, 8, 7 central. J-Lo right here on NBC. I know my daughters in particular will be tuning into that one. Not you? I, um, I, uh, what, what, what time was that on again? <laughs> my daughters have a Nielsen set anyway, so... 17-10, Rick Lance wants to get some points before halftime. Only 34 seconds remaining. Does have a timeout. Well, you know, and, he's got, and he's got a good kicker. I mean, they're already in field goal range. His kicker is uh, 10 of 11 on the year, in the year, David Hills. And he still had that timeout, as you, as you mentioned. Big, tall uh, receiver in Chandler Sims at 6'4", if you're thinking about the jump ball. Eight play drive after they stopped Notre Dame on fourth down and a yard. And now they find themselves at the Irish 16, second and 10. Tell you, they, they run this that option play, uh, the, the counter, excuse me, twice very well on this drive. And fake to the fullback, give it to one of those slot backs coming back over the middle. two for the Irish. Yeah. He, he's been everywhere. He saved a touchdown just a minute yeah. ago with a tackle coming from behind to chase down. Yeah, and you never know one of those hustling plays wins the ball game for you. First penalty of the game and there are two flags down. That's incredible. It's an ACC crew today headed by Robert C. Wood III, the referee, in his final game. Yeah, it's 40 years of uh, refereeing as a lawyer. Former quarterback at uh, Washington and Lee. Hold against Notre Dame. Wow. Is it post possession or? I think they threw that right in the middle of the, of the throw. I think the Navy's going to retain possession. Holding on the defense, half the distance to the goal, yeah. and a first down. There was also a second foul holding during the after the reception. That penalty is declined. The holding in here is accepted. Holding penalty is accepted. Well, after Shane Walton had made the interception, the holding penalty gives the ball back to Navy, and the step off will put the ball at the eight-yard line. It, it may have been on, on the receiver during the pass. So I think one of the Navy receivers may have been held. And that's where that flag went down. So the first penalty of the game comes with just 18 seconds left. And it's costly for Notre Dame. It wipes out a turnover. First and goal from the eight. Navy has only 18 seconds to lap time. Option play in the pit. He's got to get, get out of bounds there. So they have one timeout left. Yeah. And they use it right there. It was Ron Israel that made the play on defense for the Irish on number five, Gene Reese. Five against five. 
Well, they've run the option into the short side of the field. You know, ordinarily you kind of defend the field in college football because of the hash marks, but the offensive coordinator, Mike Hunsmith, has done a real good job of running the short side option and they had a couple of big plays. So Navy out of timeouts with 10 seconds left. Time for one play to the end zone? Oh, maybe two, but, I, I, you know, they could have saved that time and if Reese goes out of bounds. who is a defensive specialist uh, defers to Mark Hutzpah, the offensive coordinator. And this is what really started this Navy drive, the stop by that tough Navy Divas on the fourth and one. That's where the Navy drive. And then just two plays ago, Navy almost gave it back. It was a holding call that they, they, they took away the interception of Shane Walton. Looked like Justin Smith, as we watched that replay, was guilty of the hold of the... Got some chair though. Sims and Jefferson, who was covering him, right into the chairs, and Chandler Sims a little slow getting up. But, but that's when we just talked about. He's their tall receiver, six four. You can't overthrow this ball. You, if anything, you underthrow it and allow your six four receiver to stop and go up. Either you get pass interference or you catch the ball. So with six seconds left, David Hills will attempt a field goal. It'll be about 22 yards. Hill sends it up and through. Pooch putter, he's going to kick it off in this situation. A little uh, squib kick. Picked up by Julius Jones. Surrounded and taken down as the... Hot Syracuse team, and the Orange began the season at 0-2, but they've won eight in a row since then. And right now, Miami is... He has a touchdown pass. Also, Todd Seavers, a career-high 48-yard field goal. The Hurricanes are number two in the BCS standings and, of course, coming off that narrow win at Boston College, so they need to be impressive this afternoon. In Lubbock, number three, Oklahoma, visiting Texas Tech. Things all tied up at three. Tim Duncan has a 42-yard field goal for the Sooners, who can clinch a berth in the Big 12 championship by winning their final two games. Tennessee visiting Kentucky, what a wild game. The Wildcats, heavy underdogs, leading 14 to nothing when Jared Lorenzen hits Chase Hart for a two-yard touchdown. Kentucky shocking Tennessee, 21 nothing. Then Casey Clausen from the shotgun connects with Dante Stallworth, 15 and on yard score. That cuts the lead to 14. Tennessee comes back to tie the game at 28 all in the fourth. Clausen and Stallworth hook up again, this time from 38 yards out. The balls go up. 35 to 28 with about five and a half minutes left. Then Lorenzen on the next possession throws deep down the sideline, hits Anthony Kelly in stride. Kelly goes 62 yards, ties the game at 35 apiece. Tennessee then came back with a field goal. Alex Walls, 44 yard field goal, gave him that 38 to 35 lead with about 249 on the clock. And Tennessee, we learn, has just recovered a fumble in that game. It is a wild one. Tennessee looking for their 17th straight win over Kentucky. If they do get it, it will not come easily. Meanwhile, the 94th edition of the Apple Cup taking place in Seattle between Washington State and Washington. Both of them ranked no score early in that one, as you see. In Madison, number 11, Michigan, visiting Wisconsin. That is all tied up at seven for the Badgers. Brooks Bollinger has a touchdown run for the Wolverines. John Navarre has thrown a one-yard touchdown pass. Illinois visiting Ohio State. Second quarter, Illini leading by four. Their quarterback, Kirk Kittner, looks deep. Hits Aaron Moorhead. 36-yard score. The Illini up 21 to 10. In the third, Ohio State down by five. And their running back, Jonathan Wells, brings it in from a yard out. They took a one-point lead. But then Illinois' defense sealing the game. OSU's Craig Krenzel out of his own end zone. Picked off by Ty Myers. Return for a touchdown. Second interception of the day thrown by Krenzel. And that just completes a sad tale for Ohio State this week as their starting quarterback, Steve Belisari, suspended indefinitely after being charged with a DUI. Scott McMullen got the start. He was replaced by Krenzel. In the end, a loss for Ohio State at home, 34-22. to In the 104th edition of the big game in Palo Alto, number 13 stand for leading Cal, having its worst season ever, 7-0. Chris Lewis has a touchdown pass for the Cardinal. At Auburn, 
course, as always, this a huge game between Alabama and Auburn. Auburn looking to clinch the SEC West title and a berth in its second straight SEC championship game with a win in either of its final two games this season. In Charlottesville, number 18, Virginia Tech at Virginia. 17 to nothing now, the Hokies on top. Grant Knoll has a touchdown pass in this one. In their next game, they host Miami on December 1st. Clemson visiting South Carolina. Lou Alt and the Gamecocks looking to bounce back from that drubbing at the hands of the Gators last week. First quarter, Clemson quarterback Woody Dancer drops back over the middle to Arise Curry. Curry takes it all the way, a 50-yard touchdown. The PAT was missed. Clemson up six zip. Now in the second, Derek Watson for South Carolina. Six-yard score. Gamecocks go up 10 to 9. They led by four in the fourth, and quarterback Corey Jenkins scores from a yard out to put South Carolina up 20 to 9. The final. 20 to 15 as they snap a six game losing streak in the series. The regular season finale for the Gamecocks. They finish at eight and three. Georgia at Ole Miss. First quarter, Bulldogs by seven. Ole Miss quarterback Eli Manning on the move. Hits Jason Armstead who makes a nice grab. Extra point failed though. Ole Miss within one. Then it was all Georgia in the fourth. Manning under pressure is picked off by Jermaine Phillips. Phillips down the sideline, 82 yards for the score. Only the third interception thrown by Manning all season. Georgia goes on to win it by a final of 35 to 15. They've now won the last five meetings between the schools as they rebound from those back-to-back -back losses to Florida and Auburn. Ohio visiting number 24, Marshall. The battle for the bell, and Marshall leads it 14 to nothing. Byron Leftwich has thrown two touchdown passes to Darius Watts in this one. And rivalry weekend, as we said in college football, one of the best and the most enduring of those is the one staged every year between Harvard and Yale. They simply call it the game. And this year, it took place in the Yale Bowl in New Haven, Connecticut. On the line for the Crimson, looking for their first perfect season in 88 years. First quarter, Harvard's Neil Rose fires into the end zone to Carl Morris. Two-yard score, the two-point conversion good, 8-0 Harvard. The Crimson leading 15-7. Rose again, this time on the move, hits Matt Frotto in the end zone. A 20-yard pass play to make it 22-7. Yale came back, though, cut the lead to five, and then Harvard responded. Again, Rose to Morris. This time, 16-yard play, 35-23 Crimson. And that would be the final in the 118th edition of the game. Crimson 9-0 on the season as Harvard completes its first perfect season since 1913, clinching its 10th Ivy League title with a victory. More on college football can be found at NBCSports.com. A special interactive analyzes and ranks the contenders for the Heisman Trophy, and there are a lot of them, and lets you vote on your choice for that wide-open award this year. Coming up next, we'll take a look at last night's highlights from around the NBA, including the league's... Hills is ready to kick off. Montez Duck, deep for the Irish. As Hills booms it into the end zone, about a yard deep, it'll be Julius Jones. Jones using his blocker, stumbles and falls short of the 25-yard line. Jones upset with himself after losing his footing. number 10 here. This is Ed Melanoski, a backup quarterback. He's a team captain. But when's the last time you saw a quarterback down there on kickoff coverage <laughs> fighting off linebackers like Goldsby? Getting held a little bit, but nonetheless fighting them off. Third team quarterback, elected a captain at Navy, and as you can imagine, Tom, being a captain at uh, one of the academies is certainly something special. I think he guaranteed us uh, at lunch the other day he was going to make a tackle today. Well, I think he did. But, uh, Here's Julius Jones on first down. Got very little. Carlisle Holiday and Brian Madden, the two quarterbacks right, today, and in the first half, Madden got the best of it. Yeah, and, you know, not, not a particularly big day for either one of them throwing the football. Uh, Madden, as we said, uh, averages 126 yards rushing, only 44 in the first half. One of those was on a real long play. Madden, though, remember, has in 10 of his 11 starts has gained over 100 yards, and the Irish held him to only 44 in the first half. Here's the option. Carlisle Holiday fakes the toss. Had the ball out there precariously and manages to hold on despite a big hit from Dustin Elliott. Yeah, how many big hits has Dustin Elliott had? It's not just the hits, it's the big hits that make you get grass in your helmet there. You know, Dustin Elliott, number 55, we talked about him being the plea. That's, that's the freshman year. 
hustling defense right down the line, fakes the pitch, and, and, and that's where Elliott's kind of cleaning up. The pitch man's taken away, Elliott's got the quarterback, and when he hits you, you go down. That's the eighth tackle for Elliott today. And Holiday had the ball out there in a dangerous position, but is able to hold on to it. Play clock runs down on third down and nine. Four wide receiver formation. Holiday got away from the initial rush, kept his balance, now rolls, delivers the ball. Now, that's not coaching. I mean, the coaches get blamed, and everyone wants to run a guy out of town, but that is just a loss of concentration. Drop ball by Javen Hunter, would have been a first down, would have kept the drive alive. He was open for a long, long time, as you'll see in this replay. I mean, there isn't anybody within 8, 10 yards of him. Mm. Yeah, took his eye off it just as it hit his pads. Head, yeah. Yeah. Gene Reese awaiting the hill bowl punt. Reese did not call for a fair catch, but perhaps uh, they didn't give him that halo to catch the ball. There's a flag down after a 41-yard hill bowl punt, and Vontez Duff, the superb special teams player for the Irish, right on top of it. And the halo is how many yards? It's a large halo. Isn't that like <laughs> two yards, the halo? Yes, it is. I thought you were going to have one of your <laughs> patented puns for me. No. Violation no. of the two-yard halo. Five-yard penalty. First down. Two yard, I mean, who ever thought that you get a halo penalty called against the Fighting Irish at Notre Dame? <laughs> See, I knew one was coming. I was just a little, uh, it was a little later than I anticipated. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Here's our, one of our pleas we spoke with this week, Marshawn Minter. Talk about him a little bit later. Marshawn Minter, the native of South Euclid, Ohio. He's got wide some, receivers. Yeah, he's got some ability. He's got some flashing. Hand off to Terrell. Got a tough yard. Campbell. Marlon Terrell. In the center of the defense has had a good game. And Minter, well, being a plea, but Navy is not an easy task. <laughs> Second down. Wake up at 5 a.m. and you have to read three news articles, one sports, one international, one national, because they're going to quiz them on you. Mm -hmm. The menus, too. Then you go, if you're a football player, for treatment. Formation at 7. And then breakfast. Yeah. Here's the toss from Madden to Lane. And Lane is rolled out of bounds by Tario Harrison and Ron Israel. We're doing a little single. It's only 7 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you get so worked up, he has to go back to his room and spend some time to calm down. And he's got English class and then kind of history, and he's got chemistry, three there in a row, free period, but it's not really free because he says he's doing homework. Breeze uh -huh. through lunch as oh, fast yeah. as you can because maybe you can get a couple of minutes off if you uh -huh. can eat in 10. And then back over to team meetings. And don't forget that calculus class, Tom. And there's, there's more in the day. Third round play, Madden pitches. Looks like Lane was stopped short of the first down by about a half yard by Israel. Well, I think it's over when you finish calculus. No, you're wrong. You have to some extra instruction in chemistry. And then now, uh, whew, just when you get really tired, you go and practice. Easiest part of the day. Yeah, it is. It's the best part of the day. It's easy. But then lift a few weights, go to dinner, mm. mandatory study hall until 10:30. And then at 10.45, blue and gold. That means the upperclassmen tell you all you did wrong during the day as you stand out in the hall. And then uh, for some, maybe it takes up past 11 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> for you, know, you, it would have. I think you're, uh, you're, you feel good when you turn those lights off at 11. Don't you? You, don't, you don't mind that you have to turn those lights off. High snap. There's a long... And the punter hit. Skaggs gets it away. Julius Jones is going to let it bounce, and it will bounce to about the 13-yard line. So Navy is forced to punt. Then a 39-yard punt backs Notre Dame deep on their first possession of the second half. I'm going to go to Notre Dame. Your daughter is very talented. Cornell. Northwestern. 10,000, 15,000. Are you ready for this? 33,000. Boston College. Florida. GE has mutual funds, annuities, and investment plans that help make it easy to save for college. Arkansas. Go Razorbacks. Call a representative or 1-800-THINK-GE so when they're ready, you'll be ready. Invest with a name you trust. Is college expensive? Eh, I think it's free. GE for life.
helps protect your home from burglary, fire, flood, almost anything you worry about. ADT, always there. Catholic means universal. It should not surprise then that faculty scholars at Notre Dame are pioneering new understandings of our universe. From the smallest nanostructures as tiny as a pair of electrons to the largest, the search for life elsewhere in the cosmos, Notre Dame scientists and engineers advance the cause of knowledge on many scales, the most important of which is always measured one to one. Catholic means universal, and from the Big Bang to the quantum dot, we explore it all. is brought to you by GE Financial Assurance. Invest, protect, retire with a name you know and trust. And by ADT, America's number one choice for home security. <laughs> Simple players have a good time. <laughs> well, you don't have to read music. You just get there. Yeah. There's uh, Elliot, another plea who's having a big game. Actually, I said the... Uh, the first possession for Notre Dame in the second half. It's actually their second as both teams went three and out on their first possession in the second half. Option play, Kara Holiday. Holiday in trouble and sacked back at the four yard line. Pete Butenmuller. He's another young. Navy player on defense having a big game. And he's playing so so hard, he's losing the name on his back. Did you see that? I, again, one of the real playmakers, Brindale, number 54, really started the play, and then Butte Miller hits him, Brindale hits him, and Butte Miller's losing his name. Yeah, see, it's I think he's there. making a name today. <laughs> there you go. I tell you, it, uh, you know you're making some hard hits when you start losing the E and R. <laughs> Now the ball spotted all the way back at the four yard line. It's second down and 18 for Notre Dame. Holiday play action fake from his own end zone decides to run. And he's got some room. Crosses the original line of scrimmage and takes it to about the 17 yard line. Clyde Clark and who else? Dustin Elliott finally put him down. I tell you, one of the other things the Irish have done is really put some pressure on the quarterback. But Elliot, we talked about him being a plebe. Here's some other things a plebe has to do or must know in his uh, first year. He has to know the three daily menus, the days until each holiday. Like they had to tell us how many days to Thanksgiving or to Christmas. Officers on the watch, and they have to they can be quizzed any time about daily national, international, and sports articles. That's why they have to get up at five o'clock. And at any time, uh, you could be ordered to sound off. Yeah. Go Navy, beat Army. Carlisle Holiday, no pressure on him that time. Completes it to Hunter. A short game. His first catch of the day takes him to about the 21-yard line. Let's see again on third, be close. And, uh, third and seven. Why are you running a six-yard route, yep. Tom? It's just again one of those one of those errors in the route running. You have to make sure you catch the ball past the first down marker. It's going to be a yard, maybe a yard and a half short of the first down. So he'll bold number 17 on the punt. Okay, lick and dry his hands about four times. Reese. As Hillbolt booms one, Reese backs up to his 30. Nowhere to go. Hit and dropped immediately. Lipinski and Duff. Only a one yard return after Hillbolt sent it downfield 49 yards. Navy's ball when we return. Go, man. Let's go. I'm going to give y'all something. Uh, gee, aren't you going to answer those? Uh... If I do, I miss the game. I hate to miss the game. Uh-huh. You know, if you had TiVo, you could pause your TV so you wouldn't have to miss the game. Really? Uh-huh. Gee, aren't you and your wife expecting a baby? Uh, any minute now. Pause and rewind live TV. Now TV fits into your life, not the other way around. TiVo. TV and unexpected emergencies your way. 
All vacations canceled? What's it this time? 10 platforms in 20 countries? Bring it on, because I'll get it done. And that guy on the beach, that man's going to be me. You can accomplish anything, even seamless integration. Fujitsu, the possibilities are infinite. Strap yourself in for excitement with NASCAR and behind enemy lines. Archangel is down, and I am on the run. Evade and survive, and we will bring you home. Gentlemen, any man who doesn't wish to join this mission, step away right now. Catch the New Hampshire 300 presented by Behind Enemy Lines on NBC November 23rd. And check out Behind Enemy Lines in theaters November 30th. The Ironman Triathlon, the legendary test of endurance, takes on special meaning. A very patriotic Ironman Triathlon, Sunday, 4.30 Eastern, NBC. No 42 to 12s today. Four touchdown underdogs. Navy hanging right with Notre Dame. 17-13 in the heroes of the game so far. The Navy defense. Nine offensive drives from Notre Dame. They only have eight first downs. After that, Notre Dame punts. Navy takes over. Gets it to Reese. Hit and drop for a huge loss by Anthony Weaver. That's the 14th tackle for a loss this year by Anthony Weaver. And you know, if you're going to fool someone, I, uh, he wouldn't be the guy that picked the fool. 14 tackle loss, and then add five sacks to that. Takes a good angle. Even though he's chasing, he takes an angle where if they do run a reverse, he can make a stop, which indeed he did. It's a nice play by Weaver. Now, second down and 20. What about the strength in his hand to grab Reese for the jersey? There's a fumble. Well, Madden got that one. Madden fell back on it, trying to hand off to McDonald. You know, we've talked about it a little bit, Tom. When you run that true triple option, the fullback's not sure he's going to get it or not. Oftentimes, there's some miscommunication. It looked like, uh, you know, McDonald thought he was going to get it. Madden kept it. And it ended up on the ground, and Madden scrambled to make the recovery. In fact, in a true triple option, don't they ride with it yes. in his belly and either and take it out or leave it? So there's Gold, and Madden makes the play. So now it's third and 20, and Madden's in the shotgun. Feels some pressure and throws it away over the head of Dominic Bailey. Bob <laughs> Davey almost caught that one. <laughs> well, we talked about how much Brian Madden gets hit as a quarterback. They call him a quarterback, but he, he's, he's not afraid of being hit either. Rocky Boyman on the play. Ouch. Well, got it right yeah, in the chops. Yeah, that was Jerome Sapp. Montez Duff. Skaggs. Yeah, look at that. 21, 21 hits. hits. Mm. Skaggs to punt to Duff. It's been three and out. High snap. Skaggs pulls it down and wow. boom. Wow. One to Vontez Duff. What a flight attendant on that. From the 25. <laughs> flag is down. Vontez Duff in return. We have flags down. So offense is sputtering in the second half. Two possessions apiece. Three and out on both occasions. That was a 51 yard Skaggs punt. Four yards on the return pending the penalty. So he's losing his flag too, doesn't he? He's losing his flag there on his jersey. Names coming off. Block in the back yeah. during the return, 10 yard penalty, first down. So the penalty will be stepped off against the Irish. Who will have the ball leading by four. Some situations call for trucks with more power. So engineer Mark Verone and the team have made GMC Sierras the most powerful line of pickups in the world. And to help manage all that torque, they've also given Sierra technically advanced braking systems. Mark may be obsessed with power, but he's not crazy. From professional grade people come professional grade trucks. It used to be business was conducted face to face and people were helpful. It was known as common courtesy. At Siebel, we make application software that lets you once again give your customers personalized service. It's made a real difference in a lot of successful companies. It could make one in yours. Siebel, good service is good business.
love serving our country and 